Calvary Seminary is really the result of the passion and heart of E. Robert Jordan, who we know as chief around here, and uh, really goes back to the founding of the church, which took place in the early 1950s. And then Dr. Jordan realizing that the East Coast was really um, barren wasteland when it came to good, solid churches, realized that he needed to really create a base here in the Lansdale area for the whole East Coast where churches could be planted from. And as part of doing that, he, he really felt that men needed to be well-trained. And so he began Calvary Seminary in 1976. I would have to say that it was probably around my junior year of college that it really became evident that I was going to need some further study if I really wanted to um, challenge the issues that I saw my pastors facing um, on an everyday basis. Well, seminary was uh, one of the answers that came to my mind when I decided that I needed to know the languages a lot better. Um, as an assistant pastor, I was able to preach on a regular basis somewhat, about once a month. And when I preached, I found myself wanting to know answers to questions that I couldn't find. The seminary trained pastor uh, has that depth and breadth of training to be able to handle the issues of the day uh, in a way that the individual without seminary training is ill-equipped to handle in many cases. I know in my own experience, having been a youth pastor at age 22, um, probably having more seminary training beforehand would have prevented many problems that I encountered in my first few years of ministry. Obviously, I believe that seminarians should be in ministry as soon as they possibly can, but seminary education allows time for people to mature and to grow, to become more convinced in what they believe, and to become more firm in their stance in God's Word. For a lot of young men, they often think Bible college is enough. And, and it's, 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 it's frankly hard sometimes to tell them that it's just not. There's a few exceptions. I, I know God can do whatever He wants. If He chooses to send a man, that, that's His business. There's always Charles Spurgeons everywhere, I understand that. But most of us aren't Charles Spurgeon. Most of us need, frankly, additional training. And I think the depth of training you can get in seminary, you just can't get the Bible college level because the Bible college isn't trying to do that. A seminary education goes far deeper than what a college level education can do. There's opportunities to major and to specialize in certain areas. There's opportunities through not just an MDiv program, but even further into a THM program and a DMIN program. There's opportunities to dig deeper into God's word to become skilled in the original languages, to be able to handle the Bible study tools for oneself. We live in a very complicated world with a lot of complexities, a lot of theological complexities. And if men are not able to think biblically, uh, theologically, about issues, they're gonna just get swept away from one thought to another thought. One thing that I think any anybody who's looking to pursue seminary education begins to look at their options and really considering uh, the strengths of each each institution and one thing that I I really found about Calvary is it seemed to combine um, all of the strengths that I had seen at other places and that really was was something that combined with the encouragement that I was getting to consider Calvary from from various friends and, and my pastor um, was something that really weighed in heavily on my decision to come to Calvary. The biggest reason I chose Calvary is because my fiance was interested in coming here. He had been down here for a pastoral internship in 2004 and spoke highly of the seminary. And so I looked into Calvary as well for myself and met the registrar over email and just got to know Paul Gibbs through that, got to know a little bit about the seminary's mission, about um, the way they did things, about their worldview and just really was impressed by how Calvary has a focus of um, academics and Christian life practice because a lot of seminaries will lock you into the ivory halls of academia and you often don't understand how to minister actively in the real world. One thing that really makes Calvary Calvary and, and helps to combine the academic to the practical are, are really the faculty and staff that we have here. Um, 
really being engaged in that task, really being engaged in, in touching the lives of the students and making sure that things become real to us. One of the things that I appreciate about the teachers at Calvary is that they are willing to sit down one-on-one -on -one with you and answer any question that you would have. Uh, I've more than one time just gone to my Greek professor or my Hebrew professor and said, I don't understand this word or I don't understand the context and they've just sat down. If they have the time right then, they'll do it right then. You don't even have to make an appointment. I think one of the things that's touched me most, um, and Al Huss communicated this to my husband and I, um, when they had heard that my husband was going to be deployed to Iraq for a while, he said that the entire group of seminary um, professors and faculty during their regular meeting had actually prayed for us. And I think that really touched me so much and is continuing to be a great encouragement with just how they really care. Partners in Ministry uh, grew out of a, uh, an awareness that the seminary needed to find other friends to help in the, uh, in the support and the, uh, the financial undergirding of the seminary. And in the late 90s, uh, under the leadership of David Burgraff, uh, the, the, uh, the seminary reached out to other churches and individuals in the churches uh, to, uh, to invite them to come and be a part of what God was doing here. Partners in Ministry plays an integral part, a role of helping our students. Um, as most seminaries, uh, the tuition that we charge students here is only a fraction of what it actually costs to educate uh, a man or woman through seminary. The gap between student tuitions and the cost of running the seminary is about three quarters of a million a year difference. And so uh, to help bridge that gap, we uh, invited people to join us by contributing $30 a month to, uh, to cover the cost of one day's tuition or one day's cost of training uh, one of our students. The Partners in Ministry program is a nice way to involve individuals in students' lives. They need not fear that their money is being hidden somewhere in the administrative machinery of an institution. They can be sure that the contributions that they make are directly going to help the gap that exists between student tuition and institutional costs. We are committed to keeping our tuition as low as possible. The Partners in Ministry is an opportunity for uh, lay people uh, to contribute in a very specific and concrete way to a seminary student's education. Financially, uh, as well as in prayer. Uh, we often, as we go out and present partners in ministry, there's an emphasis on the financial aspect, and that's important. Uh, but I would parallel it to a missionary going out on deputation while it's vitally important that they get the financial support, uh, it's equally, if not more important, to get that prayer support.